Okay. Um, guys, we have a special treat today. Uh, Deborah Thomas is going to be preaching for us. Uh, I asked her to come and share with us today, and I'm very, very excited and honored to have her come on up. So would you thank her for coming, and then we'll pray for her. Deborah, thank you for being here. We're going to pray for you this morning. Father God, we are so grateful for your servant, servant Deborah. We're so grateful for the words that you have given her, and we ask that she would do a mighty work in proclaiming your gospel and your truth. Father God, would you be with her and allow the words of her mouth to um, be your, your, uh, have her be your mouthpiece as she speaks the good news of Jesus. We pray all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Good morning, Clarksburg Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are going to rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Now, the last time I was up here, some daughter who is going to rename, be not named <laughs> said that you all should take the mic from me. So I thought that I had been fired. Now somehow this looks like I've been promoted. <laughs> so I don't understand <laughs> how I got to get to preach this morning. <laughs> but I'm going to thank the Lord for the opportunity because I asked him to use me in whatever manner he saw fit. So I thank him because I said that I wanted to be available, and I am available. Now, what most of you or some of you know that um, I moved here a year and a half ago to live with my daughter and her family because I was in Georgia, and I was ill, and I was very ill, and I did not know that I was going to share some of this with you all today. I was at the point of needing dialysis. I was very sick at the point of death, um, not able to do very much, very despondent. And Alicia said, Mom, you should come and live with us. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be independent, stay at my own home, be with my friends. And um, my mom had died, and she said, you got no excuse. You've been using Grandma for an excuse. So come. So I prayed about it. And I came. And I started to get better. I lost about 40 pounds. I started to walk. And I said, hmm, I'm starting to live a better life. <laughs> and then I said, um, but what am I supposed to do spiritually? And then Pastor Beth had the discernment class, and I attended it. And I discussed with her, I don't know what I need to be doing spiritually. And I was praying about it. And I said, um, Lord, I need to be used again. I've been before preaching and teaching before I got so ill. And look what happens. <laughs> I'm teaching a Bible class. And then Pastor Beth started to poke me about preaching. So look where I am. <laughs> but I'm not Pastor Beth. I don't look like Pastor Beth, <laughs> I don't sound like Pastor Beth, and I don't preach like Pastor Beth. So you will not get a Pastor Beth sermon. But I got what I got from the Lord, and I prayed and I asked him to give me a word to give to his people. So I pray that you will get inspired and that I will be anointed and you will get a word from the Lord. But my daddy said, if you don't stoke the fire, the fire will not burn. So I need some smiles. I need an amen. I need a hand wave every now and then so that my fire can be stoked. Okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. We're we ready to go. So here we go. 
So the past few weeks, we have learned about Ezekiel's prophecy to the children of Israel. Y'all remember that? During their exile to Babylon and how they had rebelled against God. They had become a hard-hearted people, worshiping false idols, being obstinate and rebellious. Does this sound like any people or countries that we're familiar with today? The Lord told Ezekiel that these people would fall by famine, by the sword, and by plague, hmm, coronavirus, <laughs> they were to experience severe punishment for their sin and disobedience. Ezekiel predicted the fall of Jerusalem due to its many sins, but praise God, we serve a God of grace, a God of mercy, and a God of restoration. Pastor Beth took us through many chapters of Ezekiel and his dramatic vision and interactions with the Lord, culminating with Ezekiel in a valley of dry bones, where God asked Ezekiel, Ezekiel, can these bones live again? And Ezekiel replied, God, only you know. As God began to breathe new life back into the dead bones, Israel came to know a God as the true God of the universe, a God who rules over his people and over the land. Sometimes our situations seem dead, like with Ezekiel, and other times they seem dire, as our scriptures reading today which comes from 2 Kings, which will appear shortly on our screen. 2 Kings 5, 1, and 13 through 15, and it reads as follows. 2 Kings 5, verse 1, 13 through 15a. Now Naaman was a commander of the army of the king of Syria. He was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master. Because by him, the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Verse 13, and his servant came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would not you have done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Now if I was going to give my sermon a title, which I am, it would be time to take a dip. Clarksburg Church, it is time to take a dip. Naaman was a great man. He was a commanding officer and he was highly regarded. He had something going on. He was a valiant soldier, but unfortunately, he had leprosy. Now in that day, the laws and the customs of that land said if you had leprosy, you got kicked out of the country, out of the city. You had to go to the outskirts of the town. But now in my research, I got the reading, and it says Naaman got to have a little company with his wife. He got to talk with some other people. He had some interactions with his men. Now I say, now, this is not sounding right. Now other people got kicked outside the city, but Naaman was interacting with some people. So I said, now why is this happening? So my research said because he was a little uppity up, he got a little more leeway than other people. So I said, hmm, why is this going on? But you know when you get uppity up, you get a little more leisure and leeway than other people. So I said, okay. But anyway, at Naaman's house, 
there was a young Israeli girl who had been taken cap captive by the Aaron army. That's who Naaman was leading. And she said, if Naaman would go and take out this prophet that I know, he could be made whole. And Naaman's wife got so excited. And she ran to her husband and she said, I know how you can be made whole. And he said, what? What are you talking about? Leprosy can't be cured. And she said, but I know a prophet in Samaria that can cure you of this leprosy. And he said, child, what are you talking about? <laughs> but she was so... <laughs> She was so excited. She said, but you got to give it a try. So he was doubtful. But he went and relayed the information to the king. The king was encouraged. He said, you got to go to this prophet and see what he can do. And the king said, I'll even write a letter to the king. Naaman said, okay, we'll see what happens. So Naaman left with 10 sets of clothes, 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and his letter from the king. Can you imagine President Biden giving you a letter to take to somebody? Wow, what a recommendation. So Naaman went on, being rich, trying to get his deliverance. Now you know we think our coins can get us out of some jam sometimes. Y'all don't look at me funny. Y'all know that happens sometimes when you got a little bit of in your pocket, you can get your children out of some jam sometimes. Now, that doesn't work for me because I ain't got many coins. Thank God salvation is free because if it wasn't, I'd be in a world of hurt. Thank Jesus for his blood that he shed it on Calvary's cross because I would be in a world of hurt had it not been for Jesus. Now, when the king of Israel read the letter, he was perplexed, tore off his robe. Who does these people think I am? I'm not God. I can't cure leprosy. Can I kill and bring people back to life? Why is this king trying to pick a fight with me? Huh? The king considered only God can cure leprosy, and he didn't have no relationship with Yahweh. I can't do nothing about this. But Elijah heard about what was going on, and he sent a message to the king. I got your back. I know who God is, and I can help you out. So he said, send Naaman to me, and I can fix this. Elijah had full confidence that the God that he served could take care of what he had going on. He had witnessed God deliver miracles over and over and over again. See, Elijah saw God part the Jordan River, in 2 Kings 2.14. He saw God provide oil for the widow and her children in 2 Kings so she could pay her debts. I wish he'd give me some. <laughs> and many, many other miracles over and over again. He had no doubt, so much so, that Elijah didn't even bother to go to Naaman. He sent a messenger to this high commanding officer, Naaman was perplexed. Does he not know who I am? He sent a messenger to me? He doesn't even bother coming himself? Naaman said, what? What does he think, who does he think I am? Elijah's messenger tells Naaman, Elijah says for you to go down to the Jordan River and dip yourself seven times, and your flesh will be restored. You will be cleansed. 
Naaman went away angry and said, surely I thought he was going to come. The prophet himself should have come to me, laid his hands on me, and waved his hands and called on the name of his God to cure my leprosy. But he sends his lowly messenger to me to tell me to go to the dirty Jordan River. All of these waters in Israel. And this is what he wants me to do? Who does he think I am? So he turned away in rage. But Naaman's servants come to him and he questioned him. Master, if he had told you to do something spectacular, something great, something grand, would you have done that? Naaman thought. Well, maybe so. So he hesitated. He thought about it. So he said, okay, I'm going on down to that dirty Jordan River. So he goes down, goes down. He looks at that dirty Jordan River. He steps in, he dips his toe in one time. Nothing. I know I shouldn't have done this. Two times. Still nothing. No change. Three times. Naaman is exasperated. Why am I doing this foolishness? I am a decorated, high-ranking military man. Three times, nothing, no change, dipping in this dirty, nasty, filthy water. <laughs> Four times, five times, disappointed, still nothing, fighting hard to push through. But he know how to push through. He's a commanding officer on the battlefield. He knows how to stand hard. He knows how to push through. Six times, desperately seeking a cure. Nothing is working. He goes on down in the Jordan. Six times. One more time he needs to go. He wants to come out. But he says, I got to push through. I got to do it. He goes in. For the last time, he comes up. All this nasty gunk all over his body. He's washing it off, pushing it off. He gets up. He looks. He looks at his hands. What is this? My hands look new. He looks at his feet. And they do too. Could it be? Is it real? Did it happen? Naaman's flesh has been restored, smooth as a baby's bottom. <laughs> Him and his attendants, they're shouting in glee. God is real. The God of Israel, he's real. We're going to serve him. There's no other God but us but the God of Israel. This God is real. This God is for real. They're shouting the name of God. I know that there is no other God except the God of Israel. What do you have in your life that you need the Lord to clean you up from today, Clarksburg Church? David cried in Psalm 51, cleanse me from my sin. Wash me. Renew me. Do you think that is how Naaman felt that day, that he had been renewed? I realize that we don't experience much physical leprosy in the 21st century, but there is plenty cases of spiritual leprosy that is separating us from our God. Do you have a broken spirit? Do you have a contrite heart? Do you want to be purged with hyssop? Today might be time to take a dip. 
no matter what your leprosy is, no matter your condition that has you dwelling on the outskirts of the camp, it's time to take a dip. Whatever your situation, God can cleanse you up. It is time to take a dip. God can cleanse you up this morning. Give the God of Ezekiel and the God of Israel a try. Do you have a leprosy of addiction? Do you need a new fleshy heart? Give it to God. He's ready. Dip. It's time to take a dip. Maybe the doctor gave you a negative report like he gave to me. It's time to dip. Whatever is separating you from my God, it's time to dip. I stopped by this morning to remind you, whatever your leprosy is today, there is still a bomb in Gilead. Follow me down to the Jordan River. It might be dirty, but it's time to dip one time, two times, three times, six times. Dip! 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 You might get frustrated. You might get lonely. You might have to cry in the middle of the night, but dip! Let it make your whole today. Finish up the dip. Finish it up. Paul says in Philippians that he's faithful and just to complete a good work that he started in you. Let us finish the dip. Do you want to be restored? Do you want to be made whole? It's time to dip. Do you want the Lord to create in you a right spirit, a pure heart, so your tongue can sing of his righteousness? It's time to dip. I don't know what you are wrestling with this morning. I don't know what your leprosy is. I have no idea your issue of blood or how long you've been struggling with it praying over it, beseeching God. But this I do know. God is more than able. Even if he doesn't, I still know he can. But oh, it is Jesus. It's Jesus in my soul. For I have personally touched the hem of his garment. And like Naaman, his blood has made me whole. Have you tried all you could and it seems like nothing you're doing is making any good? Don't lose hope. You're on the brink of a miracle this morning. Don't stop until the battle is over. Amen. Take your last step. He's waiting on you. Down at the Jordan River, go dip. You may have to fight through the Jordan, the Jordan dirty waters, but the end result will be worth it. Clarksburg Church, I beseech you this morning, go on, take your dip one time, two times, three times. Don't stop four times, five times, six times, seven times. Go ahead. Take your dip, 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 dip. This morning, it's time to take a dip. God bless you. Well, I certainly don't preach like that, but Deborah, we needed. We needed that. We needed that. Guys, we are going to continue to worship together. Will you stand as the band comes forward and we're going to sing and respond to what the word that Deborah has given us today. Um, I just, I know that for me, there, there is, there is healing that needs to happen for me and probably for every single one of us in this room. And this is your opportunity to come before the throne of God. And maybe this is your first dip. Maybe this is your second or your sixth or your seventh. But we are going to stand.
uh, in the presence of God, and we're going to worship him and respond to him and sing to him now. Will you pray as we continue to worship? Father God, we ask that that word wouldn't just bounce off of our hearts, but instead would sink in, that you would rise to the surface, the, the areas where we need to hear that, the spaces where we do need that healing. Would you bring them to the surface? And Father God, would we trust you as a God who is faithful and true, that will bring us redemption and purity and healing. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Let's sing together. <laughs> 